Hi everyone, Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind.com and I am thrilled that you're joining me for this quick training piece on troubleshooting in the OSI model. You know, when I teach the OSI model to beginning networking students, one of the things I always tell them is, you know, the OSI model is really going to help you when it comes to network troubleshooting and they always give me this look like, yeah, really? Come on, how? You're making us learn this complex model for no good reason. Well, in this video, let me go ahead and prove to you that it is for a very good reason. Let's pretend that you are a networking professional and you're in charge of a couple of routers in your organization. In fact, let's sketch that out right now. You're in charge of routers R1 and R1 is connected with a serial link to R2. You're in charge of these routers and they're very important in your organization because R2 connects to the public internet. It is through your routers that every single individual in your organization gets access to the internet. And this is very important because they want to shop on eBay, they want to buy books on Amazon.com, they want to do all this fun stuff. So, these are your routers and you get a call one Friday, very late afternoon, that says there is chaos in the, in the organization. No one can get to these precious internet resources that they need. You need to quickly ensure that it's not your devices that are causing the problem. Now, the question becomes, what do you do? Do you take just kind of a haphazard approach? Do you come in here on the R1 device and just start randomly looking at settings like its routing table? And do you start looking at just interface parameters? And then once you check those, do you hop over to the R2 router and start doing the same kind of haphazard approach? Well, no. You want to think logically in terms of the OSI model. And one of the things you can do that's really super awesome is you can troubleshoot with it logically by doing something that we like to call bottom up. Yeah, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about a pub. No, don't think about a pub when I say bottom up. Think about the OSI model. Think about the physical layer, then the data link layer, then the network layer. Yeah, you're gonna start down at these lower layers and you're going to move up from there troubleshooting on these devices. Have you ever had this situation where the radio won't play or the coffee maker won't make coffee or your curling iron won't curl? Weird analogy for me to make. All right, but anyways, you have this device that won't work and you're troubleshooting it and troubleshooting it and then you realize it's not plugged in. Of course the radio is not going to play music for me. It's not plugged in. Well, a bottom-up troubleshooting approach with the OSI model would have solved this problem. Let's go to R1 and R2 in our sample scenario here and let me demonstrate how you would use the bottom-up troubleshooting approach against these important routers in our organization. First, you would go to R1 and you would actually make sure that there is a legitimate problem involving your equipment, right? Yeah, someone's blaming you and your beloved R1 and R2 routers, but don't take their word for it. So I go to this R1 device and I try and ping a destination, like how about R2 itself? And sure enough, this ping fails. Uh-oh. Now, by the way, if you're a beginner here and you're not familiar with ping or you're not familiar with these commands that I'm going to make on the routers, have no fear. This is just for illustrative purposes and in our course we'll cover what all this stuff does. But suffice it to say that that dot, 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 dot thing we see right there in the ping and a success rate of 0% is not good. This is not good. We like a little bit more success than 0%. So it looks like it may be our routers that is the problem. I want to do a bottom-up troubleshooting approach, so I do a command called show IP interface brief. What an awesome command. 
And this command shows me that our serial one slash zero interface that connects over to the R2 device is in an up down state. Now what the up down state basically tells you is that layer one is okay for this particular interface, but layer two isn't. Yeah, you can think of this initial status and then protocol indication, it's fine for you to think of this as layer one and layer two. Wow, what a valuable thing. So we started at the bottom up and we can see that we have a potential problem at layer two. If you went over to R2, you would find the same thing. We're up, down, over on R2. Now you can look at the configuration of your interface with show run interface and you might notice, oh my goodness, I see the problem. These are supposed to be point to point circuits and one of my junior engineers must have done maintenance here and forgot to turn on the PPP encapsulation under this interface. You notice what we do? We always blame the junior administrators. Very important lesson there. So here we go. We now have put in the encapsulation PPP command. We rerun our show interface or rather show IP interface brief command. Where is it? There it is. We can now see we are in an up up status. We now go ahead and we ping that destination we couldn't reach before. This time our success is 100% everybody's surfing eBay and Amazon.com once again, and we are suddenly the hero of our network infrastructure. So the OSI model, it's not there just to torture you. We can use it in troubleshooting as I just demonstrated, and we can use it to really logically look at our devices and start from a good starting point, work our way up until we determine exactly where the problem is. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this video training piece here, compliments of stormwind.com.